anyone who watched the movie Laundromat or the series Ozark knows that bad actors use shell companies to hide their transfers of illicit funds. But FinCEN is trying to make that harder. And just this week, they published an advance notice of proposed rulemaking that sets out a rule that requires many shell companies to report who their beneficial owners are. And this is required by the Corporate Transparency Act that was passed earlier this year. But critics of the rule say that, in fact, the effect won't just make it harder for criminals to move their criminal proceeds. It'll also impose unnecessary burdens on financial institutions and on many of the entities that are subject to these requirements. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Corporate Transparency Act, the new rule that has been proposed by FinCEN, and finally, what entities that are affected by this rule can do now to minimize their compliance burden in the future. The Corporate Transparency Act, or CTA, actually modifies the Bank Secrecy Act. And it was enacted in January 1st of 2021 by Congress. What it does is it requires companies, either at the time that they're formed or later at the time that they're registered, to report who their beneficial owners are. And that includes, for example, anyone that owns either directly or indirectly more than 25% of the corporate entity. That information has to be reported to FinCEN, and FinCEN is then going to keep all of this information in our national registry. That registry is going to be secret. Not everyone in the public can access it. But law enforcement will be able to access it, and also financial institutions will be able to access it. The goal of this registry is to allow financial institutions and law enforcement to combat money laundering. Although the CTA was passed in January, it didn't specify exactly how this registry was going to work. Instead, Congress required FinCEN to promulgate a new rule that specifies what the obligations are, both of the reporting entities and of financial institutions. So on April 5th, FinCEN submitted an advanced notice of proposed rulemaking that stated, we're going to be drafting a new rule, and they asked for comments from the public about that rule. So there's 48 questions in this advanced notice of proposed rulemaking, and it includes questions about things like what, ex what beneficial owners need to be reported, what information needs to be reported about them, and which entities need to report who their owners are. And it also talked a little bit about the security of this national database that has a lot of highly confidential information about the owners of these various entities. So interested parties have until May 5th to submit their questions. Once those questions are submitted, they'll be considered by FinCEN when FinCEN drafts a rule. The, rule, the draft rule will then be published, new comments will go in, and finally, a final rule will be adopted. Once the final rule is adopted, entities and financial institutions will have two years to come into compliance with that newly promulgated rule. While the final implementation of the beneficial owner reporting requirements is at least two years away, there's a number of things that financial institutions and other impacted entities should do now to prepare. First of all, submit comments. You have 30 days to draft comments and it's much easier to have an impact now early in the process on the language that will appear in the final rule than it is if you wait until after the language has been drafted by the agency. Second of all, once that language is drafted by the agency, carefully review it and see what impact it will have on your financial institution. If it's going to impose excessive costs, promptly submit a comment and do what you can to try to modify that language before it's finalized. Third, in addition to monitoring those, this rulemaking process, keep an eye out for new customer due diligence rules. FinCEN is going to be promulgating new rules that reflect how the new beneficial owner reporting requirements impact the currently effective customer due diligence requirements. And finally, any time that your institution is adopting new procedures or utilizing new software, make sure that it will be compatible with the obligations to collect and to monitor the beneficial owner information for your new customers in the future. It's much easier to make sure that that's possible upfront than it is to wait 
until two years from now and try to modify uh, your currently existing software in the hopes of becoming compliant with the beneficial ownership rule. So the clock is ticking. You've got 30 days to submit your comments. If you would like to submit comments and you'd like to discuss those, please give me a call. I'd be happy to talk it over with you.